Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Clayton Johnson, and I'm your host for today's episode. Joining me for today's episode is Dr. Fernando Leite, Technical Manager for Enteric Disease at Beringer Ingelheim. Dr. Leite, thank you very much for joining us on the podcast. Please give an introduction to the audience. Hey, Clayton. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, so my name is Fernando, um, originally from Brazil. Uh, got my DVM degree there, and then um, went to Iowa State, got a master's degree there in uh, veterinary microbiology and immunobiology, um, and then um, went to Minnesota to get a PhD on on Salmonella and Lausonia, or, you know, diseases in swine, and then joined BI uh, four years ago now. Excellent. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here on the podcast. Um, uh, Fernando, you and I have had the opportunity to interact briefly at other points in our career and chat about enteric disease. And once again, it's enteric disease that brings us back together. Uh, we're recording this on Halloween, so probably appropriate that we're talking about upset stomachs because there's going to be a lot of kids in our neighborhood with an upset stomach tonight. So um, let's get right to it. Um, Fernando, you and your team at Beringer have been working on a, a new challenge for enteric disease for pigs, specifically with salmonella. Uh, do you want to talk to us a little bit about the, the emerging salmonella isolate that you guys have been looking at and, and why it's important to producers throughout the United States? Sure. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, we're always looking to help our, 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 you know, the veterinarians and the customers the best we can. And we're also always tracking, you know, what's going on in the industry. And one one trend that was very, very pronounced was the increase in the prevalence of a of a new Salmonella serotype. Um, and it's called the monophasic serotype. Um, it's actually called I4512I minus, which is a complicated name. Um, I'll just refer to it as the monophasic from now on. And you know, we were particularly interested in this because it has really increased in prevalence um, over the years. Today, it's recognized and, and documented to be the, the most prevalent serotype in clinical samples submitted to diagnostic labs. So we were very interested in, in learning more about this serotype and in particular, you know, what can we do about it? And of course, we have a vaccine against salmonella, um, enterosol salmonella TC. And um, I think some of the research we may talk about today is, you know, what we found in terms of the vaccine and, and the protection of this serotype. Um, so the vaccine is actually the only commercial vaccine in the United States that has a typhimurium um, vaccine serotype in it. And the monophasic, um, pretty much it's not a typhimurium because it's monophasic, meaning it doesn't um, change its flagella, which I know is can be complicated, but usually Salmonella changes its 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 flagella into two phases, but the monophasic only has one phase, and so it's literally monophasic, and that antigen of the flagella is what distinguishes it from the typhimurium. Um, and we really wanted to understand if our vaccine could protect against it, and so you know we did some studies, and and it did look like our vaccine is quite effective against this this emerging and and now most prevalent serotype. Very good. Let's uh, take a quick step back here, Fernando, and talk about diagnosis. Um, so salmonella diagnosis, from my perspective as a practicing veterinarian, is terribly frustrating. You've got the, the first problem of it's not necessarily um, uh, unexpected to find salmonella in an animal. And then typically, we've got our, our friends at NVSL that can do the, the serotyping for us, but that process takes weeks and weeks or months and months sometimes. Is that uh, basically the only option we have for diagnosing this monophasic uh, salmonella, or are there other options out there? Yeah, so when we talk about diagnostics, I think, you know, it's important to consider there's there's different types of tests, right? And there's different volumes of samples that we could collect, too. So, you know, I would say when interpreting those diagnostic tests, um, was that salmonella positive with or without enrichment, you know? Um, and, um, like some research from, from Iowa state has shown, um, from Kent Schwartz and Eric Burrow and, and Bailey Arruda have shown that, you know, if you, if you submit a sample, um, not for enrichment culture, for general culture, and you do find a salmonella and it is typed as, as monophasic, then 
you do have a significant odds ratio of it inducing colitis. And to your question, how do you even find out if it's monophasic? Traditionally, yes, you'd send it, you know, the labs will send it to the NVSL to type it. There is also now a PCR um, that can distinguish the monophasic from the typhimuriums. And there's a couple other techniques that some other labs can use on a strain to more quickly find, um, to find out its serotype. Okay, very good. What do we know about the virulence of this new salmonella isolate? Are, are producers reporting that it is more virulent and causing more performance impact than its predecessors? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, Research-wise, we know that it's pretty much clinically indistinguishable from a virulent typhimurium. So it's it's likely not, it's likely a variant of a of a virulent typhimurium. So clinically, um, it's similar to a typhimurium, and I don't know that you know what's being re- uh, reported in the field is that it's more virulent. It's just this is the new serotype. It's not typhimurium anymore. It's just now when you have a clinical diarrhea and it's a you know and and you find a salmonella, it's a it's the monophasic and not the typhimurium that's causing the problem. Are you seeing this, uh, Fernando, as a, as a primary problem for producers where they're diagnosing this new salmonella in the absence of other disease, or, or is there typically also an E. coli challenge or some other enteric challenge that's kind of opening the door for the salmonella? Yeah, great question. I mean, I think salmonella, you know, it, it's, it's, it can be complex, and of course, co-infections can favor it, but it can also be a primary pathogen, I think, depending upon the pathogen load in the environment, the stress that the animals are under. So I'd say in both circumstances, either as a primary or as a secondary, it can cause problems. And I know we're talking a lot about the monophasic here today, but important to remember that other stereotypes, depending upon the conditions of the pig, can also, you know, um, cause, cause problems. And I would assume production systems or production styles that are continuous flow, maybe flush gutter or partially slatted barns where you're exposed to manure more often, those situations are probably more likely to have to to deal with challenges with this. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah. I think um, sanitation and, and all, you know, and the, the presence of it in the environment, the, the more that we can decrease the load that the pig is exposed to, the better. Yeah. Very good. So we've got uh, we've got a problem. We've got a, a salmonella isolate that causes issues either as a, a secondary to a, a, another pathogen or as a primary on its own. Um, what can producers do about it? I know you you mentioned that you guys have a, a salmonella, a commercial salmonella vaccine um, that's historically worked very well for for cholera suis and for typhimurium. Um, is that vaccine the the kind of gold standard we would turn to today for protection against this isolate if we? find out that we're dealing with it in our system? Yeah, I'd say what we've found in, in our research is that it, it's very effective. Um, and when we talk about salmonella, I think it's important to consider its clinical aspect, right? But also its colonization and shedding aspect. Um, and what we found is the, the vaccine is very um, effective in reducing um, diarrhea to this, to this isolate. We've, we've published those results. Um, and it's effective at reducing its colonization and shedding, which from an environmental and, and transmission impact within the population um, is also, you know, particularly important to consider. So, yeah, the vaccine, I think, is is a very significant tool and, of course, um, should be used in combination with sanitation and biosecurity and all the other things we know about as well. Right. Very good. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Leite, for coming on and, and sharing us uh, sharing with us this update. Um, certainly very uh, timely, given that producers are diagnosing this monophasic salmonella more and more. Um, I want to thank you for coming on the show, and certainly to everybody else out in our audience, thank you to listening to the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. If you haven't visited us at swinehealthblackbelt.com, please go check out the website. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast so you won't miss out on the next episode. Thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you next week. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show to talk about it with me and share it with our audience, feel free to send an email to healthblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to take a look at your research.